Welcome back to the channel. We're Carol and Ken and we like touring in our little red camper. We're currently in France, having been on a massive trip to Norway and Denmark. In this episode, we're going to explore some very interesting secret weapon sites built by the Nazis. If we'd failed to knock these out, then we could have lost the war. We're also going to visit some of the local sites and I get to enjoy one of my favourite foods. Right. Let's see what the weather's like outside. Looks all misty over there by those trees. Pretty sunny. Do you yeah. The sun on your face. Lovely. Did you have a good night, Charlie? I did. It's very quiet here, wasn't it? I slept like a log. Yeah. Mm. Make up till quarter to eight, so I must have slept well. Yeah, we put that in any old way in there, don't we? But it never comes out creased. Don't need to fold it, no. And it uh, makes a nice extra pillow, doesn't it? Very yeah, we be relaxing the evenings. Update on the fly killing procedure I've done away with the cloth, but I'm still using the uh, torch and this is the new method that is absolutely foolproof once you've perfected it the trick is let the fly land on some firm object and then just put the torch on it and slowly bring the torch down keeping the fly in the center and you can get all the way down so we've only got one more full day tomorrow in France, haven't we? Well, today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow, and then we go and catch the Channel Tunnel back to UK. Yep. So this morning, to celebrate near the end of the trip, we're going to have croissants. Um, do you think these trousers are too big for Carol? I think they are because they're mine. Why are you wearing them? Well, after the olive oil incident where I squished olive oil all over mine and then that evening also I spilt some curry sauce. red curry sauce <laughs> it didn't look right did it? it didn't look right no so she's know. resorted to wearing mine these are tasty proper french croissants from my yeah, bakery lovely it's not real butter though is it or is it some no, sort of it's Danish I don't know what it is. It, it tastes nice. Probably. It's easy to spread, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. The Epilec Blockhouse is a Second World War bunker. It's located near Saint Omer in the northern part of Calais region of France. There's a small but very interesting museum at the entrance. The Germans used this site to build their V weapons. First, the V1, also known as the Doodlebug, which rained down on London, and later the V2. In order to build such a mammoth structure, the Germans relied on slave labour, consisted of thousands of prisoners of war from Russia and the Eastern Front. Also forced labourers from the Netherlands, and mostly Frenchmen liable for obligatory work service. Conditions were inhumane and many workers died. There's a memorial to them at the entrance to the museum. The site was constantly under attack from the air, and this is a sentry hut to protect the guards. On the 27th of August 1943, the site was attacked by the US 8th Air Force. It was planned precisely so that it would strike while a new batch of concrete was still wet. This caused it to spread everywhere and then it set firm, making a large part of the bunker unusable. This wall was to have had a height of 46 feet and was intended to contain around 120 rockets. Look at the plans in front of you. The section on the right, fully one third of the total area, was never finished. You can imagine the huge proportions the first bunker must have had. Even though the bunker is badly damaged, you are able to go inside parts of it. There are three levels where the liquid oxygen tanks were finally placed. 
enabling the loading of isothermal wagons. The rockets were to have moved outside the bunker to the launch pad. The defectors, still visible on the walls, were designed to reduce the shock wave from the rocket blast. As we could see on the outside, some sections are flooded. Icarus, Leonardo da Vinci, Jules Verne, and all ages, man has dreamt of exploring space. I don't know why, but there's something deeply relaxing about getting your boots off after you've been out and getting your slippers on. This is a pair of well-travelled slippers. I've got hiccups now. We've got a 45 minute drive now to another secret weapons site that we missed the last time we were here. This is the site of another secret V weapon, but one that's very different to the two we just saw at the blockhouse. Lining is just huge, isn't it? So this is the site of the V3, which was a series of huge guns intended to shell London. Deep under a chalk hill was a series of five shafts, and each of those had a series of guns that were permanently aimed at the heart of London. When fully operational, each of these guns would have been able to fire a dart-like high explosive projectile at a rate of 600 rounds an hour. Just coming into view now are the gun barrels and the protrusions each have explosive charges that once the gun is fired progressively fire more charges in order to give more energy to the projectile. Had it gone into action, then this weapon would have had devastating effects on our capital. Luckily, thanks to aerial photography, it was discovered before it could go into action and destroyed in an air raid. There were five barrels in each pit. Let's hope it doesn't collapse anymore. On the 6th of July 1944, 617 Squadron of the Royal Air Force dropped 12,000 pound tall boy bombs, which destroyed most of the tunnels, but unfortunately trapped many of the slave workers inside. Well, I think this must have been caused by an explosion because look, on the opposite side you've got impact marks and they go all the way up to the roof. Mind you, we've got the same sort of marks here and on the opposite wall and roof. So it's a mystery. Actually, the mystery is solved. The tunnels were destroyed on Winston Churchill's orders after the war because he feared them still to be a threat to the UK. This annoyed the French because they were not consulted before it happened. So what have we got in our cupboard? Anything that I can use to cook up something? List me the ingredients. Well, we've got to use to rustle up a meal then. We've got some spaghetti or pasta. Yeah. To the sweet corn. Yeah. A little bit of packet soup left. Yeah. And in the fridge we've got some two slices of ham, some sliced cheese. Mm -hmm. um, That's it. Um, some milk, some flour, if you want to do a sauce with that. And spices, salt and pepper. 
Yeah. Oh, I've got loads of spices like curry powder, chili powder, herbs and spices. Um, we've got smokso cube things. I think I'll make spaghetti with the ham and cheese, some milk, some flour, butter, and maybe the rest of the soup in it. It's probably sloping down at the back. Mm. I haven't seen it do that for quite a while. Uh, we got plenty of gas, obviously. What are you doing, Charlie? Puzzle. Relaxing time while you pick my dinner. That's right. Mm -hmm. Get a bit of flour in here. Mix this in. Right, the spaghetti lump's gone back in. Carol's taken over because I've just cut my finger on that tin. I don't know. How's your spaghetti bunny? Delicious. Good. Yeah. Right, another day, another dollar. This was a good park up really, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought it'd be quite noisy from the road noise we had in the evening. It's interesting because when I looked out earlier, it was really grey and miserable. Mm. Now, if I can find a little clear place, nice beautifully sunny for our last day in France. We're just in the shade here, of the trees. That's right. Are we? There aren't no trees. Well, a hill then or something, or is the sun just coming up? Uh, we're on a hill. Yeah. So yeah, the sun, sun clearly sun, can't we? reach us yet. Yeah. I mean. Oh, I think there are trees on the left-hand side. <laughs> so you do know what you're talking about, don't back. you? I take it all back. I'm demob happy today. Quite happy to be going home. I think we've reached our limit. We know our limits now in our van, don't we? Yeah, we reckon about five weeks max. Five weeks max and then we've had enough. Yeah. It's such a small space. I finally found your breaking point where you can't go on any further. Well, you could go on, couldn't you? But you just, the longing to go back and get into that big bath at home I just think, takes over. Yeah, you, if the weather was nice, you could probably check into a campsite and have a few days relaxing and recharge your batteries. Yeah. You know, and sit out. And, I'm not so sure. Well, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> With a nice pool to relax by and... You know. I'm looking forward to my big screen TV and my nice, big, relaxing, comfortable settee. A nice takeaway curry, followed by a nice takeaway Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> not on the same day. No, not on the same day. We have, you know, we, we have some rules. Just heard a couple of shots very close to us and we can see the guys now in their yellow orange vests oh, yes. over there That's shooting got a gun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they all know we're here so we're safe we hope. <laughs> but we're just about to go yeah <laughs> okay let's go shopping okay. so we've boobed a bit here because we plan to do a big uh, shop to go home as it's our last day today but it's a sunday and a lot of the supermarkets are closed. So we found a little one just around the corner from where we've parked that's open till one o'clock. Yeah, we cocked up royally, didn't we? We've certainly been lucky with the weather on this trip, haven't we? Look at it. So Glorious day. End of the trip. Yeah. yeah, today's the last sunny day, I think. Look at that. A load of tanks. Yeah, it's another museum. I'll go for the lethe that, that we had before, it was very nice. Let's try 
Fancy trying this tonight? Okay, shopping done. It was only a small Carrefour contact, but it seemed to have everything we wanted. Good enough for us, wasn't it? Good enough, yeah. And, and we could have bought a lot more, actually, because we've got plenty of space left. I'm going to have a clear out of this van when we get back because there's a load of stuff we don't need to bring with us. Yeah. Say that every trip, don't we? Yeah, we get rid of more and more every trip. Where Good. am I going? I'm going right. right. Surprising how much you can fit in, really. Oh, yeah. And you really want to. Good. Stocked up with some wine and beers for home. Yeah. So we're going to have a look at this fort now in Amble Tours. Yeah. Oh, it's telling you to go straight on now. It's uh, redone the route. I knew this was the best way. <laughs> so you might you deliberately went wrong at yeah, the roundabout. Well, I just thought you knew, I'd throw uh, you a low ball, see how you cope with it. Yeah. Lovely view of the sea here. Mm. You do, let's slip over. You'll only do it once. That's far enough. It's all very fresh, isn't it? Lovely. Not bad for your last day in France, eh? Not bad for October day, is it, by the beach? Beautiful. And it says Louis XIV came here in 1680 and decided to create a naval port on the left-hand side. Oh, right. And it, it extended over 30 hectares, but unfortunately now it's all silted up. Yeah, yeah they're leaving the right camp over to the left camp. Head back to Calais now. We're we ready for tomorrow. Yep. The channel tunnel tomorrow morning. Everybody out enjoying the weather, aren't they? Look. Beautiful Sunday. Make out the white cliffs of Dover really clearly. Most of England is crystal clear today, and the white cliffs really show up, don't they? Yeah, yeah. it's obviously full, isn't it? I don't know, no. doesn't look like it. Yeah, it's on there, it's a bit slopey though. Yeah. Let's keep it around there. Yeah. Oh, you can do that one on the end, like that. That'll do nicely. Full on sun blocking in this position, front and side. Get yourself some space blankets, folks. They're the easiest way to block out the sun, provided you've got some magnets, that is. And they squash down to virtually nothing when you've got them packed. We've been using the two same ones for yonks now, haven't we? Yeah. Order them online, they come in packs of 12, don't they? Yeah, we got well, I think actually it might have been 20 in ours. They're very cheap, you get them, and um, they do rip every now and then, mainly the little corners. But ours has not ripped enough that we needed to get a new one in action. <laughs> we made a cracking baguette. Well, that cheese is lovely. Yeah. I think they sell it in Sainsbury's. Oh, salute, it's really creamy. 
very tasty. Mm. What I love about a camper van is you're always moving on. When it's weather like this, it makes me want to get a motorbike again. Yeah, when we were here in June, that was just covered in mist and low cloud. Hardly anybody here was there yeah. last time. Yeah, Not surprising, no on a day like today, is yeah. it? Yeah. Who would come here on a cloudy day when you can't see anything? Us. <laughs> well, only because we had to, because it was the only day that we were here. Yeah. Do you remember when there were all these people sat here having yeah. their lunch? Oh yes, and it was freezing cold. Yeah. And yeah, crouched down behind this wall. Sheltering. I wonder if anyone thought back at, during the war that people would be up here having picnics on the defences. I bet they didn't. So close and yet so far. <laughs> Not long now. We'll be there tomorrow. tomorrow this time morning. tomorrow we'll yeah. be home, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a great trip. I think it's been nearly 3,000 miles. Has it? Wow. Okay, we're off to see Mr. Beignet. It's open and can sell us the beignet. It's a stunning drive in the, this light, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The sunlight, it's beautiful. Nice road for motorbikes as well. Yeah, think. great drive on a motorbike. We've spotted beignet. They got, they got beignet. beignet. So that's a good sign. It's a good it? sign. It's, it's okay, be I haven't taken the last two. Yeah. Oh. Know, Le Tunisian Calais. Is that a queue for beignet? Is that one there? Yeah, yeah. queuing for beignet. Revant reverse into that. It's obvious. Or did you just say beignet? You just said beignet. No, as I was there by the place. Oh, I see. So you must have wondered what everyone was queuing for. Yeah. Beignet. They look good, don't they? Yeah. You enjoying that? Mm. Well, Carol has had to admit defeat. She no. can't eat two beignets. I told her this when she bought them. I said one beignet be enough. You, and then my final question to you was, how many shall I get? And you said you wanted one and a half. So I had to get three to get one and a half. I was just practicing my French numbers. Mm. Well, let's store that one. I've got a bag. No, I mean, is the bag going to be all right? Or I was thinking, just put it in the ridge monkey. We'd probably find it in about six months <laughs> after it had grown three heads and taken over the yeah. cupboard. Right, we're in pasta again tonight. And we're going to try a tin of this. Sensation chili con carne. Meanwhile, Charlie Brown is doing a puzzle. I'm not, I'm updating the log. All oh, right, okay. So where we are, where we're staying. So this is the third night we've stayed at this air in Sangat. Yeah. So last night in France for us. And what time is our crossing tomorrow? Can you remember? No. It's about 9.30 is the latest check-in. 9.35 is the latest check-in. Okay. Yeah. So I vote we just get up and go tomorrow. Just brush our teeth and uh, go and check. <laughs> that way we can stay later in bed. Uh, we're booked on the 10.20. Oh, right. Oh, that's quite late then, isn't it, really? Yeah. Okay, normal get up then. So get up and go from here about nine. Yeah. All right. This is almost ready. And it's looking pretty nice actually, and it tastes very nice as well. So I'm very impressed with that tin of uh, chilli. Little bowl of chilli's ready. And very tasty it is too. It's very like stag chilli. Mm. 
I put a bit more um, chilli powder with it, a bit of sugar, yeah. a bit of salt. Very tasty. It's very tasty. Protein. Clear. It's 7.30 in the morning, alarm went off at 7, so we're now ready to move off and get the channel tunnel. And strangely, there isn't a drop of condensation on the windows this morning. And the sun is just coming up. So we need to get on our way now, see if they'll let us on an earlier train. Well, we hope you enjoyed these episodes from France. If you want to support us, then a like, share and subscribe goes a very long way indeed. For those who would like to support us further, then you can always buy us a coffee. It only costs from £1 to do that, and we greatly appreciate it when people show they care. <laughs>